guys, I've got some explaining to do. Right now we are in our friend Dan's GT3 RS, very, very similar to my car, and we are in Brainerd, Minnesota. This is one of those moments where uh, an opportunity kind of presented itself a lot because of YouTube, and it's just one of those things that just doesn't happen, and we dropped everything to make it out here. Dan is good friends with one of the owners at 311 RS, and I'm familiar with them because of the special edition Evos that they built, the white and blue Evo 10 like Navo had way back, but I didn't know that they have a Porsche race team. But this year, they're racing in the Carrera Cup, the first time ever in the US. There's a Porsche only cup car series, and they have two 992 cup cars. They asked if there was a chance that I wanted to try driving one, and well, we hopped on a flight, and here we are. being super loud. Me and Clyde have been able to have like a conversation. I know, it's weird, it's weird. Talk about our feelings. <laughs> Dan's car is sick. It's actually like a, the, the spec, if I reordered my car, I was very, very on the fence about just doing all black because it looks so subtle with a carbon roof and the carbon hood on black. You can like barely notice that it's a plastic package. This is your personal car that you're driving in Carrera Cup? Uh, yep, this is it, number 12 car, 311 RS Motorsport. So I, I need a, a favor from you. So I still feel like I have very little knowledge of the Porsche race cars and everything, and I know there's a lot of different variants. So if you could give like the most simplistic breakdown, I know there's the GT3R, the RSR, the Cup cars. What's the difference? Yeah, well, Porsche's been building race cars for a really long time. They have a race car customer program. They build the nicest race cars, club racers, professional racers all the way to the RSR at Le Mans, which is like over the car itself, well over a million bucks. This is a cup car. A cup car started in Carrera Cup in 1990. Um, it's evolved, it was air-cooled then, and uh, evolved into this. This is kind of based off the street car. The street car's not even out yet. Turbo chassis, which is a little bit wider. Uh, front end track is wider uh, than the G3 street car that we're gonna see. Big front tires, 305s. And uh, as you see, downforce and lots of other things. But what is cool is there's streetcar stuff. So like, you know, I think you'll see these are plastic bumpers. It's not crazy carbon, uh, like the GT3R and the RSR. You know, this is a factory tail light. This is a tail light that's in the 992s, like all 992 you see driving down the road. This is cup car. Um, this rear bumper is GT3 basically, so road car stuff. So it's a mixture of race car and road car you know this rear bumper is just being plastic versus like a 3r bumper or an rsr rear bumper would be like eight eight or ten thousand dollars just probably the bumper itself so wow. this street car plastic is cheaper the main thing is the difference between the street car and race car is the factory safety devices for racing this car has a really nice roll cage porsche always does that really well strengthened in a lot of different areas fire system the seat, the seat mounts, all that. This comes, this is stock. This car is completely bone stock straight from the Porsche factory in Germany. So uh, safety is super critical and important. Obviously they went water cooled and then they went to sequential transmission with the 997 and then paddles with the 991. This is paddles. That's where the modern day is now for race cars, but double A arm front suspension on this versus the McPherson struts on the older 991s and everything before. They were always pretty fast. Now this car is kind of getting to GT3R territory, like 997 GT3R and kind of at the heels of 991 GT3Rs that are racing pro right now. I mean, we're like, some racetracks were like a second, second and a half off. 
what those guys were on. So. so I just learned today that the RSR isn't even rear engine. I never knew that. No, so no. It's, that's like a prototype with mid-engine. That's like all the cheats all in one that they can do to make those cars fast, huh? Yeah, it's built for the rules. So an RSR is basically built for 24 hours Le Mans. And uh -huh. then like WeatherTech, IMSA Championship has GT Le Mans. Those cars run in the States and in other places in the world. But essentially, that's really a Le Mans 24 car. That's the biggest race for those cars each year. And it's mid-engine, the transmission's flopped, the transmission's right here in between the axles. And it's, yeah, like you said, it's basically a prototype. It's in insane. So for my audience, I know you guys aren't entirely well-versed in the world of Porsches and all the numbers. And I know you spit out a lot of numbers. So I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna do the super simplistic breakdown. Everyone gets confused when I call my car a 991.2 or say 992, because they're like, wait, I thought it was a 911. because we forget because we're so involved in this world. So that is a 901.2. That's the same generation that I have. It's a 911. This is also a 911, but the 992 is the newest version, like my Turbo S, that uh, isn't out yet in the US, but some of the Europeans are getting deliveries of. So I've never seen a 992 GT3 in person. And this is the, the more badass cup car version, race car version. So I don't know what's, what's gotten in you or thinking that it's okay for me to drive this car, but I'm not gonna say no. And, <laughs> I'm stoked. You showed man. up. You're here. Yeah. yeah. I'm ready. No, I got my race suit, my yeah. helmet. I've ridden once and I think it was like a 996 cup car. Yeah. Quite and a bit different. I didn't have a neck restraint or a Hans or anything. When they hit the brakes in that car, dude. Yeah. My neck was like through the windshield. So. Yeah. Yeah. Brakes and Porsches have always been good. It's, it's incredible how simple in a way these cars are, but how fast they are and brakes. Porsche likes to stop. So I've never driven a Porsche on slicks. So do you do like a warm up lap or two? Do you have to come back, reset pressures? What's the... Yeah, I'll set, I'll dial in the pressures for you. So you won't even have to worry about that. Um, with the motor in the rear, the rears actually come in pretty good. Mm -hmm. Used to with the McPherson cars and it was more difficult to get front tire grip, but this car, uh, you still got to work on getting front tire grip the first lap or two, but it comes in and there's so much grip there anyways, it already starts feeling pretty good, you know, early on. He mentioned that these are now uh, dual wishbone, dual A-arm, however you want to call it. Um, I know that that's something that a lot of Porsche people have been asking for for a while. They used it in the prototypes, right? The RSR always had it? It, it was first in the RSR, okay. and then it was in the GT3R 991.2 gen, and now we see it in the cup and on the street car. So. And that's what everyone keeps raving about, about that new 992 GT3. <laughs> so even though it's going to be a little bit uh, maybe not comparable to the street car driving this it will in one sense but um i'm excited to hopefully feel somewhat of a difference but having never driven any sort of porsche race car i'm sure it's going to be a a bit of a, a leap from what i'm used to you're going to have a lot of fun <laughs> you're going to be you're going to go home wanting a porsche race car pretty bad <laughs> i know that maybe that maybe that's all 311 rs's plan so um they were very instrumental in putting this together along with porsche motorsport and um i'm just super excited to be out here are you going to ride in the well i guess you can't ride in the car with me huh we have a seat coming and I'm oh, yeah. going to give you a ride okay. at, towards the end of the day. Cool. So I tried to, uh, I downloaded this track on a set of course. I tried to familiarize myself at least with some of the, yeah. the breaking points, but I know real it's, life is probably yeah. going to be a little different. It'll be different. It'll look different. This track's cool. It's a really old school track. Obviously drag strip on the front straight, but this is like the longest front straight, I guess, in the country or longest straightaway on any track. Mm -hmm. And then turn one is going to be maybe six maybe top of fifth gear um like 160 or 170 miles an hour so turn one is one of the fastest corners you flat i don't think we'll be flat yeah. i don't know maybe if it was like race you know weekend yeah. qualifying but um i've driven it i've driven the track in a 991 and i had to lift a little bit 991 cup so it's really fast do you know what you run on this track, just out of curiosity? I don't know yet. I'm guessing towards down towards the low 30s, but I don't I don't know yet. I was just curious. So itinerary for today, you're going to shake down the car. I think I'll probably take some sight laps in Dan's street car, get familiar with the car a little bit, and then I think I hop in this? Yep. Cool. That's the plan. So you warm up. It's a nice warm up. Oh, and then that thing just rolled up. Yeah. Oh, Is that yeah. the club sport? That's the GT4 club sport, yeah. All right, we'll talk more about that later. <laughs> I know you got to get out there. Yeah, yeah, Go warm for sure. this thing up. Uh, I'm so excited. Lee's giving us a sight lap in the Panamera. This is a GTS? Uh, yes. I don't know what that means, but it sounds good. Yeah, yeah. All wheel drive or rear wheel? It's like it was rear wheel and then it wanted to do all wheel. <laughs> and then I, I was, was like, say, I had quite a bit of light. I, I kind of felt bad, bad for it, so I was like, yeah, I'm gonna get away from the pile. Oh. 
now, this this feels identical to what it felt like on the sand. Like looking down yeah, this, visually, that's cool. This, yeah. So this is really long straight into a crazy fast quarter. It sounded like you're almost flat. I did it flat, but I wouldn't suggest. Yeah. That. <laughs> <laughs> what, what's what's like the breakaway point? You start to feel it in the rear or the front? Um, it actually was pretty solid, except there's a bump right through here. Like right here. So yeah, you can you can see it right yep. here. So when I hit that bump, the rear wanted to move a little mm -hmm. bit. So I had to do like a little Understood. little thing on it. Uh, Here's your first hard break zone. I would start at like the six, end okay. up kind of at the five. Understood. This corner starts to get tighter, 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 slow. It feels like you're going so slow now at this point because you were just going so fast. Yep. You can use the apex curbs there. I would, you know, you can use this, but then you don't want to. You don't want to end up straddling. If you yeah. straddle that part, it will. It could drag the engine on the ground because uh, it's so low. And then uh, you can the, use the curbs. Do you walk it out here? Do you sacrifice stay a little bit of the exit there yeah. to make sure you can get over. And so this corner is really pinches you. It's tighter than it seems. And then it opens up on the on the exit. Dan's kind enough to let me take his car out to get acclimated to track before I take out the race car. <laughs> Fancy harnesses. So Lee's gonna be driving that Panamera in front of us and we're just gonna do a little lead follow so we can get acclimated to the track. The AC cranking. I'm trying not to follow too close so we don't get too many rock chips. This corner is technically going to be six. And we'll downshift into fifth for the next one. Real smooth through here. A little bump right about here. I didn't realize there's a clutch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's paddles, it's um, straight cut yeah. gears and all that stuff. I mean, the, the box is very similar to uh, the actual manual box, but it's pneumatically shift or, you know, with hydraulically shift um, with the electric actuator. So it's not like PDK at all or anything like that. So it's got one clutch, you know, a single triple disc clutch, um, just like a manual would. But uh, yeah, and you gotta use it. Look at the steering wheel, man. It looks like a video game. So when, when you're driving, I, I wasn't paying attention to how you're driving in that Panamera. Do you, do you use your left foot on the brake or do you I'm use... a right foot breaker. Okay. Yeah, I'm a right, do whatever's comfortable. Just I mean, that's what I am. You don't have to use the clutch. Doesn't mean you have to brake, like a lot of karting guys are, you know, left foot, but I'm right foot. Yeah, use right foot. You're basically, your left leg is useless once you get going. Initial bite on these pads, is it hard? These pads are, no, the pedal is a little bit uh, softer than normal because okay. we race on these rotors and pads um, and it you won't get moved up until the next race. So, but plenty of force, plenty of torque on the rotor, plenty of slowing down, stopping power. But you do have to mash the pedal pretty hard in these cars. All right, guys, this is a, uh, a once in a lifetime opportunity. I, I'm, I'm stoked. I'm gonna try to get acclimated and just uh, do a couple laps with it and then I'll bring it back. We'll set up some more cameras. I know the GoPro's probably gonna be a little bit weird for you guys in here, but I forgot that this thing had a halo. Um, let's go have some fun, guys. Aww. No clutch once we're, wow, this thing sounds rad. Let's do it. <laughs> GoPro's gonna be a little annoying hitting the side of the seat, but we'll do our best. Way faster than the street cars. Gets down. Get some heat in the tires. This literally feels like a playing video game right now. What a cool opportunity. Oh, Chris. 
Jesus. Pushed a little bit too much with the tires being cold. God, everything just feels so crisp.
good. I felt like the car wasn't even breaking a sweat. I'm breaking a sweat though. <laughs> so I'm in the car struggling with uh, the helmet camera on the side of my helmet, like in the Hans, like doing this. Probably cost me like 10 seconds if we're being honest with my laptop. <laughs> but we found out that they have really cool in-car cameras that uh, are running all the time and have a bunch of like data on them. Uh, and they're gonna give us that footage. So I'm gonna go back out for another session. Um, I feel a little bit more comfortable with the car. I kind of understand the track a little bit more. More than anything else, I just want to be totally transparent with you guys. This isn't like them gauging me as a 911 Cup driver, as cool as that would be. More than anything, this is to bring awareness of how awesome these cars that Porsche Motorsports manufactures for people to buy and take to the track and kind of bring awareness to that. This thing's awesome. The fact that you can just buy this off the showroom floor, mind blown. So I'm stoked to have the opportunity to be out here. I'm super grateful to all the people at 311 RS Motorsport, Porsche Motorsport North America. And uh, this is not just one of those things that someone tosses you the keys for. This is by far, uh, like of all the cars I've driven, I mean, I, honestly, I don't think the craziest car I've probably ever driven was, I don't know, maybe a Lamborghini or something. This like blows it out of the water, like tenfold. I go drive more now. I go vroom. You go vroom? Go vroom.
we still got plenty more fun stuff planned for today, but it looks like it's about to rain, so we're rushing to get in the car. Lee's gonna give me a ride at full tilt on this thing. I know he's probably gonna put 10 plus seconds on my laps that I did, so uh, we'll have the in-car footage from the cameras that are already in the car, but I'm excited to uh, get to feel what the full potential of this car is. Biggest takeaways, I'm a bad passenger, my stomach, not very good as a passenger. There's a couple areas for sure where I could get on more throttle and I found out that red line's blue, not red. Mm. Yeah, but man, it makes me want to go drive it again now. <laughs> Lucky, I'm glad I got a lap in with you before I started raining. While we're here, we actually got the opportunity to drive another crazy car. This one in particular is a GT4 Club Sport. So you can actually purchase these cars direct from Porsche, whether you're a weekend racer or you want to race in a series or whatever. Again, factory race car. You got slicks, page interior, comes all like this from Porsche. Uh, this one's actually owned by uh, Brainerd International Speedway, and they're a Porsche Motorsport dealer. So. Uh, they're kind enough to let me take it for a few laps. I've never driven a GT4. I've heard loads of good stuff about them. I've been scared to drive one because I know that I'll like it. But mid-engine versus rear engine. Uh, again, obviously slicks set up as a race car. The Club Sport's more reminiscent of a street car than the Cup car is. I think this one even has like a factory style transmission and like sort of factory stuff inside. Uh, but I'm excited to go do a couple laps and see what I think. All right guys, so first uh, GT4 experience. And it is a Club Sport. I actually didn't mention as well, this is an MR edition. So it's uh, tuned by, I believe it's called Manthe Racing. And it's got some special little bits. I think mostly carbon stuff that make this thing even faster than it already is. It'll be a little bit uncomfortable for the first couple laps while I talk to you guys because I have the uh, GoPro pressed up against the halo of the seat. But let's see what this thing feels like. Look out for 
rain, got a little bit of water on the track. Already feels much lighter in front. Interesting sound. Brake pedal's got to play in a little bit more than before. Very good turn in. Super linear power band.
everyone, what a, what a crazy day when Dan hit me up on Instagram and told me about this whole opportunity. It's one of those things that sounded too good to be true, so to be out here and drive these cars, I, I cannot thank 311RS enough, I cannot thank Porsche Motorsport enough, they were also very helpful in putting this together. Also Brainerd International Speedway for letting me drive their GT4, um, but like, to drive a 911 Cup car, let alone a 992 Cup car, there are 23 of them right now in the USA, and it's mid-race season, so that would be like, me just letting some random YouTube person drive my S15 in the middle of the FD season on a track where it, uh, if you went off track, it'd be pretty bad. So uh, the fact that they had faith in me to drive and trusted me was uh, huge and it's definitely greatly appreciated. Um, if you guys want to learn more about their season and uh, Carrera Cup, I'm going to put as many links as I can in the description to all the people that helped put this together. Obviously show them love for showing me love and letting me come out here and do this. I wish I was a little bit more emotive and vocal in the car, but for me, never having really driven a race car or anything, as much as I wanted to be that uh, vloggy person inside the car and just talk about every little single thing, I was trying to focus, because you you take a second away from paying attention and you could wind up into a wall on something like this. But uh, very stoked. I hope that I have more opportunities to do more stuff like this in the future, whether it be with an Evo, a Porsche, whatever. Um, it's just cool to, partake in all the different forms of motorsport because I really find that uh, in each little subsector I learn something that could be applied in another. So massive thank you to all the people that helped put this together. Flying back tomorrow morning, this is uh, one day come and done, but it was awesome. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, I'll see you soon. When